welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and we're going to continue on today to work up to uh, playing with the wonderful Tapmatic. A little device that uh, threads holes like a Tasmanian devil on steroids. And uh, But before we do that I want to show you guys something. Right here, let me get the right, right button. You see that sticker right there? Outside Screwball. That's Chuck Bomarito's channel. And Chuck is a certifiably nice guy. I met him in California at the 2015 Bash. And uh, I could tell right off that he was alright. So there's his sticker. I like to show it now and then so he doesn't get all upset. Because usually I'm standing in front of it. And I, I noticed here lately, I've seen a couple of examples of road rage. And I'm thinking that... Uh, there should be some kind of a test they can give people down to the driver's license place to find out if they're prone to losing their temper, you know, uh, you know, at the drop of a hat. I mean, these people are not normal people to get into road rage. That's uh, incredibly childish and uh, a total inability to control themselves. And I don't think they ought to have a driver's license. They ought to be able to test for people like that and tell them to walk or take a taxi, you know. And I'm sure they'll throw a fit right there on the spot, but just more proof that, they're <laughs> that they ought not to be driving. You know, I was just seeing this road rage stuff, and it starts over a little nothing. A guy moved over when he didn't see you, or, or on any kind of little things that a normal person would let go by. These guys, I mean, they freak out, and they're giving the bird, and and hollering and chasing and trying to ram each other and they shouldn't be driving that's all I can tell you alright now that's enough of that we don't want to put a cast a, a pall on the on the festivities here let's go ahead and get worked up to getting the, getting out the uh, tapmatic and getting busy we'll finish up as much as we got to finish up before we get it out and then zoom we'll get that little bugger out and get after it Okay, here we have a 50 caliber ammo can. Made in China, never had an ammo in it. <laughs> but, it does have something I like a lot. It's got a genuine Tapmatic. You see that? And we're going to, this thing's already set to do quarter 20. And that's what we're going to do with it. We're going to make a bunch of quarter 20 threaded holes. Now, I'm going to haul it over to the, to the mill and try and get the right size collet in it and get it set up and then I'll wake you guys up. Okay, I had to turn on the air conditioner. I was watching Cup of Joe this morning and he's scrunching around in the snow and you know, it's up to the top of wheels on his trailer and all that sort of thing. And you know, I, I go on my smart TV and I punch in to search for Cup of Joe. And you know, I get Cup of Joe and Cup of Juice. Well, today I got two Cup of Joe channels. Apparently, there's a young fella decided he wants to be Cup of Joe as well. So, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, uh, Pierre says that I need to chamfer the holes before I thread them. So, I sit over there on with the drill press and a V-shaped rotary file and I chamfered the holes. Now when I was using that uh, center drill I kind of had an idea that I'd drill kind of deep enough with it to chamfer the holes that way. But then I decided it wasn't working as good as I wanted it to. Of course it would have if I'd, if I'd set a stop. But anyway I've got this guy, he slides back and forth. and. I'll just go right down the road and do, <coughs> excuse me, I'll go right down the road and do one hole right after the other. There's 300 and some odd, I think 354 holes here. I don't know if I said that a minute ago or not. Let me look at my calculator. Uh, okay, 300, 345 holes to thread. I'm going to let you guys watch me do about, you know, 20 of them or something. And uh, instead of boring you to death, because it'll probably take me 30 minutes or more to do all these holes. I know that uh, 
If I was doing it by hand, it'd probably take me two or three days. I'm going to put you all to sleep while I line up on the holes here, and then we'll start up. I guess that's about the right spot to watch it. Let's add a little bit of lubrication to the things here. And crank her up. I got it running about 800 RPMs because the next step up is 1200. And I didn't really want to do that. But it's a nice new tap and it should, should handle this okay. faster than that. That's the first time I've had any kind of a malfunction. I'm sure it's, I'm not going far enough into the stroke upwards with it. not able to lift it up high enough I've set the head too low so I'll put you guys to sleep and I'll lift it up a little bit that's one of the wonderful things about a round column I'll have to line everything up again all right I believe I'm <coughs> lined up good enough now I didn't have the thing up high enough so I couldn't pull the retract it enough to make the gears stay engaged so wasn't a, it wasn't a malfunction of the tabmatic it was a malfunction of the idiot that was setting things up build that little rod that holds it very very well let it slip loose there made it out of aluminum I'll back you up so you can see what I'm talking about this little rod here holds this guy so that you don't have to and uh, apparently aluminum is not quite strong enough for the job there but you can see how many holes I tapped in that short period of time. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Did 14 holes there in about a half a minute or less. Uh, I'm going to have to fix this little rod, correct that problem, and then I'll be back and we'll finish threading. The problem with my little bracing rod there came about because I've got my jig built here too close to the uh, edge. I think you maybe can see there where I let it, let the collet rub on the darn thing. I don't know if I can make this. All right, now maybe you can see the rub here where I let the collet rub on that side there. And that gave me way too much friction on everything and caused control problems. My jig is not as good <laughs> as Joe Pizinski's and uh, there's really not much I can do but I don't have his experience he's probably made a million holes with his tapmatic and I've only made maybe a hundred and something so I'm learning here so you all just sort of bear with me and learn with me and we'll try <coughs> we're going to try that all over again but a little bit further away from uh, from the fixture here see how far down can they get that's far down as I can thread there. Yep. Okay. We're gonna 
Let's go after it again. There's something in the hole. Or not. It may be that I've loosened the, the tap. I'll wake you up again in a second. Alright, so when I let that rod come over and jam up against things here, let me see if I've got it in the camera. What happened is that rod got against this knurled edge here and this is the tension adjustment and it ran the tension all the way off to nothing now it's labeled here as the quarter 20 so you got to come down to get to the quarter 20 mark there and it's not at all easy to do it hanging on to it like this ah. You can see that this turns around and goes down until you cover the the range that you want to have tension on. And I ran it all the way to no tension at all. So now I've got to readjust it and then we'll be right back to it. Okay, now I've got it adjusted where the quarter 20 is, is touching the, the edge of the mark there, which is where I had it before. And we will take, this thing has a little piece inside I don't know if you can see it or not let me get a let me get a light I'll try to show you all right that square down in there that's where the the square end of the uh, tap is squeezed down good and tight and then the collet which is this little rubber collet here it's got metal around the edges but it's floating in rubber all the metal pieces are and this squeezes down tight on the shank and when you don't have some guy having accidents with things and ramming things together it works like a charm unfortunately we we're stuck with a redneck operator here and, and so we'll, we're going to have problems off and on okay all is well again figured out what i messed up on and move all the way from this race so we should be able to go like crazy now. Right there was 15 holes really quick and they're threaded very nicely inside all the way through so I'm gonna at this point bring the uh, video to a conclusion I'm sure that uh, Bubba or Ole or uh, maybe Thibodeau who knows somebody's around to let us share their life so you hang on and see if there's a joke and oh, one important thing, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. It don't cost you nothing. If you're, you know, if you, if you see the little thumbs up thing, punch the thumbs up if you like the video. Now, if you didn't like the video, punch the thumbs up anyway. And if you're totally indifferent, punch the thumbs up. Whatever you do, that's, that's just the two things, subscribe and punch the thumbs up. All right, folks, there you are. Acres of threaded holes. 345 holes threaded. I guess total working time, maybe about an hour, maybe less. Of course, I had to 
stop and redo my jig a little bit so that I didn't cram that that uh, collet down on the side of the jig again and you know things like that and I had to deburr and clean it up every little bit but we got her done we done got her dead Bubba spent all his life living out in the woods you know and so he was really tickled to death when the local sawmill advertised for a log inspector. He gets up there and applies to the job, and so the foreman and owner decide to take him out in the woods to see just, just what does he know, you know. And uh, so the foreman stops, they go running down, bounce down this little old logging road in the pickup truck, and they stop there. And the foreman gets out, points to a tree, and says, See that big tree over there? Just just what species is it and how many board feet of lumber does it have in it? Bubba says, that's a Douglas fir. 383 board feet. Well, the owner's really impressed. The foreman's impressed, you know, and so they get back in their truck. They go driving on down another another mile or so, you know. And the foreman stops, points out a big tree, and asks him the same question. Bubba says, that's a hemlock, 285 board feet. Well, the owner's really looking impressed now, and the foreman got to worry in there, you know, that maybe Bubba's smarter than him. He needed to do something to kind of make him look bad, you know, so they drove on down the logging road a ways. Foreman stopped, points to a big tree over there and says, uh, look here, Bubba. He says, take this piece of chalk, go over there and mark the front of that tree. Bubba says, all right. So he goes, you know, trotting off out there. Bubba walks a circle around that tree and looks it over, puts a big old X on the tree, come walking back. The foreman's, you know, looking at him. Said, what he says, uh, Bubba, just, just what the heck makes you think that's the front of that tree? Bubba says, well, he says, on the count of somebody took a dump around behind it. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.